I'm phenomenal. Um, yeah, it's a gloomy, windy day. A lot of windy, gusty days here lately here in the, uh, well, the aptly named Windy City, I suppose. So um, good to see our, our, our true kingdom uh, playing to its true form, I suppose, Jim. Coaching discussion today. Coaches. Big time coaching discussion. Folks watching on the YouTube will note that I am back in my traditional setup for the first time in a month. It feels amazing. I got a second screen once again. It's great. Uh, Kai, you mentioned we are here. Our pot is like Olive Garden. When we're here, we're family. Kai. Okay? So let's get into wow. it. Let's discuss. Love that. Exactly. Yeah. We thought it'd be more fun to do it that way than just like, oh, we like 40 hires, gave them between A plus and A minus. Like, nope, we have 12 A's to give out, 15 B's, 20 C's, uh, and then eight D's and five F's uh, with some maybe like one or two tweak between there. BYU hiring somebody yesterday threw off our scale a tiny bit, but that's fine. Kai, we, we had to make some tough decisions. I'm excited to see where you guys doled out your A's. Hi, the chat is saying they can't hear you. Um, I think that is an important. It's note. relevant. It's relevant. Uh, yep. Uh, and Kai, we're not recording, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you do. Or I'll I'll start doing that. Recording in progress. There we go. So I mean, heck, we could even restart if we wanted to. Uh, but yeah, chat. Kai is working on that. Just so you know, All he right. will find right. the setting and fix it like a magician. They can hear me now. Good. There we go. We're starting again. Ready? Here we go. Quick intro. Hello there and welcome to the Three Man Weave College Basketball Podcast. My name is Kai and this is the second time I've done this intro because, once again, I forgot to hit the recording button. That's on me. It's not on Jim. It's not on Matt. It's on Kai. My mic was not working for the YouTube to start, so sorry about that. Great. Awesome. Hopefully you fast Hi, we're in off season. We're in off-season form right now. Off-season form. Here's the highlights. Quick intro. We're talking coaching hires today. We're giving out grades to uh, the 60 coaches that were hired this season. Five Division One schools, there's three still pending, but 60, we'll say that's good. We have to do it on a bell curve uh, uh, system, so to speak, mostly Cs, 12 As, 15 Bs, 20-ish Cs, 8 Ds, 5 Fs. The boys have to give Ds and Fs. Matthew, say hello quickly because we are recording this officially now. Say hi. Uh, hello, Jim, to you. Jimmy, two-time. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Like our second <laughs> yeah. recording. I am pumped to be back in my home home base for the first time in a month on the podcast, have a second screen. But yes, for the for a little behind the scenes, this is maybe the first pod we've recorded with a true hard out. Kai yeah. has a place to be. So yeah, we're going to try to get this done before 3 o'clock Central. And uh, for the grades, if we are all in consensus, we'll just move on because, hey, we all agree. But it's college basketball related, guys. I'm going to the USBWA Awards tonight at the Missouri, Missouri Athletic Center. Very excited. Matt and I have attended the last couple of years. I think this is the fourth year the Weave has been at this event, very excited. Uh, Juju Watkins, Don Staley, Roy Williams, Barry Henson, our boy, are all going to be in attendance, as well as Gina. Good to Oriella. see Barry back. Yes, so good to see Barry women's back. Women side, men's side, good, good attendance attendees. I'm excited to rub elbows with some college basketball folks. Uh, yes, real quick, plugging the the socials: three mw underscore cbb. That's where you can go to get our Twitter content, our Instagram content. Check it out. Please follow us. That'd be great. And the YouTube channel. Very important for us um, as we look to grow even more. Three Men Weave YouTube. Go subscribe. Watch the videos. Hit the like buttons. All of the above. Good stuff. That's it. Let's get into Roots Roundup. Get the fellas catched up, caught up on news and notes. And then we'll head into, into the coaching higher grade segment. Jim. That's right, Kai. We are going to get the people catched up right about now. <laughs> A little jab at my friend there. Um, we do not have an ad. It is not nope. uh, an ad sponsored space anymore. So we're just going to get right into it. We'll start real quickly with a tweet from Mr. Amir Abdul Rahim, the coach of South Florida, just won the American in his first season down there in Tampa. Kai, I believe you discovered this. So I'm going to let you say it to the people. Yeah, I like this. Uh, Amir Abdul Rahim, some of you Power Five coaches, heads, and assistants need to get back on your craft. Don't pass on a player. And then a year later, once you see what your eyes couldn't, try and poach him from our programs. But hey, everyone can recruit. 
not everyone can evaluate. Wow, shots fired from Amir Abdurrahim. I love it. I, I mean, it's kind of a, I think he's telling what's going on right now, especially some of his guys that are headed to Alabama, Maryland, uh, Selton Miguel, Chris Youngblood. It, it seems like, yeah, I, I, they didn't, uh, they didn't love him in the portal last year. Suddenly they saw him perform at that level and suddenly they love him in the portal this year. It's just kind of a fun jab because we know this poaching stuff is always going on. And yeah, it almost does punish the guys who evaluate best and helps people who just have a whole heap of money, a, a Brinks truck behind them at all times. They can just kind of pick off the guys they want. So it's not great, but it's part of the system right now. We think the, the edges will be ironed out as we go. Uh, I'm not even going to mention the coaching hires, fellas, because we're going to do a whole lot of that later in this pod. No reason to dwell on it. Uh, there was a 2024 recruit that happened Right before we got on the pod, um, Cam Scott, a four-star shooting guard committed to South Carolina. Wanted to make sure we got him mentioned in there. That is the upcoming class, 2024. So respect the Gamecocks filling in some of the uh, the gaps that they've lost in the portal. Michi Johnson headed out of town. Perhaps Cam Scott will fill that void. Nothing in the class of 25. Lots of crazy stuff in the portal. Um, we have a specific request from Twitter, Kai. We honor requests from Twitter to discuss Umar Ballo to Indiana. Matthias, this is your Hoosiers. They also got Miles Rice. These are two of probably the 10 best players in the portal. That's good from a talent perspective. But alternatively, it looks a, a lot like last year's structure of the team with two bigs next to Mbako, a point guard that can't shoot. How do you feel about this accumulation of talent? I love the individual pieces, obviously. Um, but yeah, we we still need a shooter or two. Kai, do you believe Miles Rice is a good shooter or um, the sub 30% three point clip he displayed last season? Gosh, I think I love him shot. too much. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't great, but it's. I think he's better than that. I do too. Matty Itest tells me better shooter than that. I'm with you. And I just love him too much as like just a guy and like his whole story. But also the way he plays is very cerebral, like very instinctual, change of pace, angle type guy. Um, I, I like some intelligence coming to the IU backcourt, Kai. Didn't really have a lot of the last couple of years. Intelligence, IQ. Yeah, great kid. They just had the same problem they have last year, like Jim said. Um, okay, great. You have Balo and Renew. That's the exact same thing you had, except a little bit less shooting because Ware could actually stretch a little bit. Um, didn't work last year, but maybe the answer is better guards and another year in the system for Renew and, and, and Baco as well, Jim. Yeah, Baco's development, I think, could be something that helps unlock that. He was pretty poor defensively. At the start of the year got a little better, and the shooting stroke is there. Uh, just just took a while for it to come along. Yeah, I I, I think they're going to shoot under 10 threes again, and it's going to be a problem. They don't have that like same big-to-big -big passing either. Ballo's not like the super go-go gadget dunking arms that Ware is. Uh, the renew to, to wear passing thing was great. I loved watching that, but I don't know if Ballo's quite going to have that. We'll see. We, we'll, we'll discuss Indiana. Way more this offseason. Don't worry. Uh, some surprising names in the portal. Jeremy Roach leaving Duke. Did his four years under uh, John Shire and Coach K. Matt. He's headed to, we'll see if they're greener pastures, but he's he's headed elsewhere. That we know. And Aiden Mahaney leaving St. Mary's. Somebody that you know got a lot of hype as preseason All-American. Ended up a solid rotation piece or a solid starter for a five-seed uh, Gale squad Matt, care to comment on either of these two guys that you are uh, very familiar with and fond of? Yeah, the Aiden Mahaney one was the, I think people on Twitter were all over this, like the very obvious guy who, you know, local kid, grew up wanting to play there, had like a long, long-term relationship with Bennett, but also Joyner, the former assistant who left for Michigan, wink, wink, maybe he's going to play for Dusty in Michigan. But big picture, this is like one of the all-time, like, man, the portal is still kind of a bummer, despite all of the good that comes of it. It is like, Mahaney not in St. Mary's will, will, will bother me next year, kind of. Just, you know, whether you like him or not as a player, I think everyone likes him. It's a pretty unanimous take. Um, just this one's sort of a tough pill. There's no good left in our game. Like, there's, like, th this was pure, <laughs> and this was tarnished, and that hurts. There's, yeah, well, money talks, unfortunately. So, all these guys, surprise transferring, the Arizona guys, it's because of money. At the end of the day, there's no loyalty, and I can't really fault them. I'd go and, get my. And, and guess what? This amount of money you're getting this year, I bet, will like maybe never ever be available. This could like be the three peak. or four right. or five year, with the the COVID year thing. I think it's just a perfect culmination. The yeah. market's gone completely haywire. I mean, it might be sustainable, but 
I mean, people are going to get some big, big price tags when we look back, I think. My minor concern with that is that next year there's going to be less players in the portal because no more COVID years. So and supply if, goes down. So, yeah, yeah no, supply right. goes down. Does suddenly demand go up and prices go up for guys? So that, that we will see. Uh, Jeff Goodman tweeted that $1.2 million was the asking price for Umar Mello, which is just wild. Uh, yeah. uh, Eye-opening. Eye Texas had an adventurous week. Uh, one, one of the schools that probably stood out the most. Boo. They bring in. Lame. Julian Larry and Jason Kent from Indiana Lame. State. Yes, sad. Uh, they also got Tremon Mark from Arkansas. Uh, so three starters in there for the Longhorns. But on the outs, Tyrese Hunter, Dylan Mitchell. It just kind of, I'm not going to say swapping deck chairs on the Titanic. It's not like the team was bad this year or they'll be bad next year. But um not not like needle movers in either direction. This is more just about the fact that I'm bummed that Shirts in the the Sycamore Five did not stay together, Kai. I know. I want. We all wanted them to go to SLU all together. It sounds like SLU will get a couple of those guys, get Jemerson to stay. Hopefully, it's a it's a net downgrade for Texas, though. I, mean, I love Julian Larry. I love Jason Kent. They're not better than Dylan Mitchell and Tyrese Hunter. So great for Texas, but you have a worse set of players now. I think they're going to be good there. That that's what bums me. I think they're actually going to like make that team Man. elevate them to a level above the caliber that I think Rodney Terry has shown he can elevate talent. And I think that's been at par or below par the last two years. Uh, maybe you save the tournament run. They're I should both, say they're both categorically worse than the guys going out. Yeah, I'm going to go yeah. hard the other way. I, okay. I think they were elevated by a fantastic coach and, and good system. We're not that that's good fair. before him, and now they're going to be in a system that doesn't work for them the same way. Doesn't produce the the caliber of shots and. Uh, I don't think they look as good there, which again bums me out. But Larry's from Texas, at least there's some kind of tie there. It's not he got paid. Uh, good for him. Man, young yeah. man got paid. But hey, that's it. That's it for Roots Roundup. We're not dwelling on any other random news and notes. None of none of this like scheduling stuff is coming out, Kai, because we have 60 coaching hires to get to in the next 62 minutes, essentially. Let's do it. Yeah, coaching hire grades. Uh, as I briefly, briefly, brief, briefly laid out at the top of the, the broadcast. Um, 60 new coaching hires out there in college basketball right now. Three open jobs currently. Not going to worry about those for the time being um, because Gerald Gillian, that's right, left Chicago State, took an assistant job at LIU. Um, sad. Sad. Whatever. Um, so the, the rules for this exercise. <clears throat> the boys have to disperse the grades on a bell curve-esque scale. 12 A's, 15 B's, 20 C's, 8 D's, and 5 F's must be given out. So we're going to be forced to be a little negative. We apologize if we're negative about your coach. We'll hopefully explain why. If we don't explain why, grill us. Just destroy us. Uh, I'm curious. Did you guys, so for your, I, I did raw scores and then just converted them. My raw, it's a very smart class is my point. I, I, I like my initial grades were heavily skewed toward the B range. Um, more A's than Jim slotted for our allotted group and very few Fs. Like actually, I had, like no Fs in my initial swath of this. Probably so, had two Fs in my uh, initial. Yeah, yeah. I was okay. Eh, I had a lot of Cs. I started with I started with two and had to bump some couple of Ds down. Yeah. There. So yeah. Okay. All right, we're going alphabetical order by school, guys. That's that's what we're gonna do for your reference <clears throat> internally here. Excuse me. <clears throat> Starting with Arkansas. Arkansas. Woo! John Calipari, John hey, Cal. Uh, it's an A for me, fellas. The, the resources he brings. Whoa! It's an A. The resources he brings to the school. They, he doesn't bring, no, the school already has resources. Not the, not the John Cal level, man. They, they're getting basically everybody from Kentucky that he signed. It's going to be a their best recruiting class probably ever. Once all those guys go to there, go there. And, um, yeah, it's a home run. A C. Please explain it, what, why it's him, a C. It, him versus Musselman. Is it really a major upgrade over Musselman? I I, I just don't see it. It's just going to be more of the same. Upgrade. Arkansas gets lots of good same. players. Some some years will work with, with a lot of talent. Better players. Other years, I don't feel like they're going to get a categorically better caliber of player they've gotten in the last few years. I don't know. Maybe now with the money from Tyson, but not because of John Cal. I guess that's my point. I just want to separate those two. The reason they're getting players, and Kentucky's learning this right now, is because of John Cal Parry. Yeah, not, not I think Cal Parry is the biggest reason. <laughs> like, getting top 10 guys, yeah. like... Money. People have money and they don't get top 10 recruits. That's basically exclusive that's for Duke and Kentucky. Um, I, I don't, maybe that's Calipari is going to be the one getting him. I gave a B here. I don't like that he brought his whole staff. Sands, John yeah. Welch, the guy who kind of revolutionized the way they played basketball this year, seemed like a pretty stagnant administration or, or group 
there at Kentucky and I saw a lot of big blue fans like, wow, we brought that whole group. So our choice was Mark Pope or running it back. We're, we're pretty pleased with moving on. So big, great take phenomenal that, take that knocked it down from an A to me, but put, put or, it or, Orlando Tigua Kai, your boys following yeah. coach Cal to uh, Arkansas. I know how much you love his X and O clipboard. Guru. Dude, look at their, they're going to get every guy that committed to Kentucky. It's, it's going to be a top five roster. It's because yeah. of John Calipari. I, I don't think he's great X's nose either. We move on. Uh, Bryant in the America East. Bill Martelli Jr. gets the full-time gig. So he, he was in this role a bit when Grasso uh, left the program. I gave it a C, Matthew. Uh, obviously, he has good, good genes, old Martelli. And now he takes on the full job. I think he did pretty well there as the interim. What do you think? Yeah, I see. I actually like him, I think, more than both of you guys, but I think it's a C. He plays as Grasso, who is a really good coach, too. I think C is just a, a solid grade for this. Yeah, I would C as well. I guess let me let me throw in like four little caveats as I graded. Uh, I prefer a gamble on upside. Um, retreads likely get knocked if they got fired before. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll give context around that. Juco guys are the toughest to evaluate. I think those are the ones I had the hardest time grading. And then internal promotions trend hard towards C. There's got to be a big yep. reason for me to move up or down uh, from an internal promotion likely being a C. So this one was one of those, a C. Agreed. Uh, let's go to a brand new coach that just got announced. Kevin Young taking over at BYU for Mark Pope. He was the Suns' top assistant. He's getting like $30 million over seven years, so big contract. Strong Mormon ties, Jim. I believe he went to BYU. His last name is Young. That helps. Um, I'm going with a B, Jim. I gave him a B. Yeah, I don't I don't think he went there. I can't remember for sure. Okay. But he is he is Church of Latter-day Saints. He's from Salt Lake City. Uh, I went B as well. It seems really well regarded by NBA circles. And to pull him from being, I think, the highest paid assistant in the entire NBA down to college when we see everybody else trying to go the other way where they don't have to recruit, they don't have to deal with an AL, I think is a pretty good statement from BYU. So a B for me. Yeah, I was BC. I, I'll go B. I, I, I probably just... Got to choose. I, 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 I went C. I'll stick with C, but I kind of want to go to B after you guys convince me. I, maybe he's better than I'm giving him credit for. Oh, I like that you're different. That's okay. Yeah, uh, don't be... Give, give a C, Matt. I like it. I'll stick with no, C. no college experience at all. Is yeah, yeah NBA, NBA to college. Yeah, that goes really well. Yeah, of course. It's not <laughs> NBA player. Different NBA players to college are what I think we're more skeptical of, right? Okay, in the Big West, Cal Poly, John Smith is on the outs. In comes Mike DeGeorge. Fellas, he was so-so in D3. Um, lots of D2 success, though, at Colorado Mesa. I gave him a D, Matthew. Uh, B, he's replacing John Smith. He won a ton of games at D2 and like a good conference. I'm, he was with Andy Newman, I think, at I have to uh, San Bernardo. Ber Bernardo. Uh, this, this is a B. For, for Cal Pally, John Smith, this is a B. It's a good hire. I, I, went, I went B as well. Um, just kind of like the winning at Mesa, there wasn't a lot of it consistently before he got there. And then his like six years were really good. But to Kai's point, the history before he got to Colorado Mesa was not good. Not good. Like really bad so yeah. uh is is he those tenures or is he the mesa tenure we, we will see canisius in the metro atlantic uh reggie witherspoon goes out the door in comes jim christian a guy with significant head coaching experience has done better at the lower levels jim i gave it a c i think it's a solid hire agree c uh he has been fired but not at this level he's been successful at this level and he really only got fired in an acc school that no one wins at really uh, and did fairly well there. So yeah, Matt, I I was close to going B here. I think it was a good a good choice by Canisius. I like it as a C. Agree. I was on the B border. I did go C though. Um, I, yeah, want to underscore Jim's point. BC is a really, really, really hard place to win at, and I think he was far more successful than his general perception shows. Okay, Central Arkansas hired. Uh, excuse me, hired John Schulman, who is related to another hire that we'll get to later. UT Martin, John Schulman. Um, he made two NCAA tournaments as the head coach of Chattanooga, Matthew. Did you know this? Two NCAA I did know tournaments this. And very good at Alabama Huntsville. And in my opinion, no offense to Anthony Boone, this is an upgrade just based on that. Uh, a C for me for Central Arkansas. Yeah, I gave it a C. I mean, Chattanooga is a good program. Like, I don't feel like he like did anything. Maybe I'm underselling his impact there. All that. All that that's true, but they, they've had successful dudes come behind them. I think it's just a good program. I, I do. I, I seem like a, a sharp coach, Jim, um, but C. Too much unknown for me to go D or B. 
I went D, and here's why. Uh, I, the tenure, despite making the tournaments, wasn't like blowing me away at Chattanooga. And the Huntsville success, he's following Lenny Acuff. And the team got a little worse as he was there longer. And again, it's hard to keep it at the level of Acuff, but um, I, I just I wasn't blown away by what he did with what had been left behind by somebody that's universally respected. So this was one of my Ds. Charleston Southern, um, Big South, Barkley Radabaugh, gone after many, many, many years. Saan Nimley took over during the year. Well-liked, I believe, is Nimley, Jim. I gave him a C, internal hire. I know Matt loves this guy, so I, I started with a C, Jim. Yeah, Matt's going to hate my F. F. Um, I don't think you promote a guy off a staff that can't win. They won eight league games over the last three years. He was a part of that. And it's kind of why they semi, I don't know, I won't say they ran Radaba out of town, but um, being well-liked and being good at coaching are different. And I have seen not much evidence that he's good at coaching. So this is one of my Fs. Matthew. I gave it a C, actually. I fell in between. I, I do like him. I feel like I'm buying into that, I don't know, the Twitter hype about him. They did play better once he took over. There's a little bit of that interim bump. But to Jim's point, it doesn't mean he's going to be a great coach long term. Um, I think this is a young, cheap hire for a program that doesn't really have a lot of resources. It might work out, and I'm sort of more bullish than I think the average show, but that's kind of where this is right now. Staying in Charleston, we're going to the College of Charleston in the CAA. Pat Kelsey went to Louisville, so they hired Chris Mack, the former Louisville coach. Uh, I gave it a B, Matthew. I think Mack's going to do very well there. Uh, yeah, I went B as well. Really good job. I, I think they maybe could have got someone better, I guess, or not someone who's not been out of coaching, but I do think he's a good coach. And I don't know, Jim, are we going to buy into the, f- the fade field of 68 um, defectors, or, or is that a real thing? I, I really wrote Field 68 curse with Archie and Prome struggling, <laughs> but Sean Miller's been terrific at Xavier, so I'm, I'm not going to knock him for that. He's a good coach. I, I don't, I hope this isn't like a, um, a Steve Lavin at San Diego. Is this like a retirement in a sweet city type yeah. of job for him? He's not that old. <laughs> yeah. So right, I, I think he'll be pretty engaged, but um, I, I went, I went B. He's just a good coach. B's across the board for the boys. Coastal Carolina, Cliff Ellis, goodbye. Thank you for your service. Retired. Justin Gray takes over, did a great job at uh, Western Carolina. I gave it a C, Jim. Yeah, I, I kind of went back and forth. I ended up C as well. Uh, limited track record for him, but he's shown flexibility. He's gotten pretty good players at Western Carolina, a place with like no resources. We'll get to them uh, later with their hire. But uh, I just think some of the like changes in style that he made and acknowledging that he couldn't play like Winthrop sprint ball all the time was smart. So I went C. Yeah, C. And I, I think it could be a B, actually. Like, I don't know. I just feel like that's a really uh, kind of a sneaky good job. Um, good conference, up upsurging conference. And Gray took WCU to heights it hadn't really been to in a, in a while. So I, I can't, it might be a B. I went C, but it might be a B. Well, that's, that's why it's tough. This is, this, this, this is Matt trying to slip in mm. as many Bs well, I mean, as he can. Mm. This is how you get... Uh, it was a good cycle by the 80s. It was a good cycle. Oh, 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 well done. Wait, wait, well, well, less ADSC as we've seen in years past. Behind the scenes, behind the scenes in the rating system the big, at big four accounting firms, you're only allocated a certain amount of fives, fours, threes, twos, and ones. This is, this is how it happens, folks. I'm very confident that if we went back to last year's coaching higher grades and the year before, Matt's like, what a great cycle. Like the 80s did really like, there's no way he was like, the higher the high suck. And year. you get an A. It's always and tough you get to, an A. Yeah, and you get tough. an A. Uh, okay. Uh, Cornell. Brian Earl's gone. That's yeah, tough. Uh, John Jacques takes over a lifetime Ivy assistant. He's been at Columbia and Cornell. Uh, Cornell under Earl. Young, a former player, Jim. But I went D. Um, Earl going out's tough. Jacques has no head coaching experience so what d uh this was this was a straight down the middle good hire under a previous good regime c for me uh, straight down the middle uh yeah i went c i wanted to go b though it, it sounds like he was a big part of the roster construction Someone at cornell. Put a super cut of matt wanting to go b <laughs> there's a lot of b's in this group guys um i don't like graded curves i, I want everyone to, to pass and do well in life um i i get i cl- again close but um smart dude Kyle Smith ties to, yeah, smart guy. Uh, okay, DePaul. Hey, Chicago's Big East team. Tony Silverfield's gone. Got Chris Holtman, Ohio State. I mean, he got fired technically, but gosh, I gave it an A, Matt. I think it's a fantastic hire for a DePaul program that has not had any success over the past 30 years. Thoughts? 
Yep, I gave him an A. Just a high floor type of coach, right? Which is what DePaul needs. DePaul needs a high floor, a floor raising, program lifting type of coach. I think Coltman is a perfect fit for that. Got the Midwest kind of demogra- geographical connection. Already assembling a team quickly, getting to some continuity for the offseason. Jim, I love it. A. For for what DePaul is, probably should get an A. Correct. But I didn't get there. I went I went B. Uh, I, it's it's a good hire, like objectively good, and it's much needed. Somebody that has a track record. So yeah, B for me. Okay, Detroit Mercy, one of the worst teams in the country last year. Holy moly! Uh, goodbye, Mike Davis. Hello, Mark Montgomery. Mark Montgomery, Jim, a forty-two percent win percentage at NIU. Was fired at NIU. He has Tom Izzo ties though. He's back in Michigan. It's an F for Kai. Sorry, it's one of my Fs, Jim. Mark Montgomery. I don't hate it, Kai. I started kind of in the D or F territory. I ended up going C, and here's why. Northern Illinois has six 15-win seasons in the Ken Palm era. Montgomery has five of them. Uh, Guys before him, bad. Guys after him, bad. Uh, It it wasn't pretty while he was there. He obviously ended up getting fired, but uh, tough place to win. Local ties with Detroit. I, I stumbled up to a C, Matt, for one of the retreads. Uh, I went D. N- nothing creative here. I-, I read that the hire was like largely driven by like a group of like former alumni and boosters with like partial input from some consult. Like it just didn't feel like the smart people made the decision. It just sounds like, oh, it's a guy from Detroit that we know well that's close to Izzo. And it's like, this seems easy. It seems too easy for me. Yes. Yes. Good. Good context, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Drake. Uh, Darian DeVries took the West Virginia, do- West Virginia job. So Ben McCollum comes in from D2 Northwest Missouri State where he was dominant. And I'm going to throw that word around a little bit, but no, it really applies to McCollum. I think he won six national titles, Matthew, Um, something like that. I gave it a B uh, for Drake. Uh, I gave it a C, another one where it could be a a B, but I did go C here. Just following DeVries is tough, man. I know Drake's actually like not really a great program, just speaking to how good DeVries did there, but uh, I did go C, Jim. I just think it's a tough act to follow. Went A. I love the gamble. Uh, I think somebody was going to pull the trigger on him, and and Drake finally did it. it context of following DeVries, maybe uh, is, but like, there's nothing the administration could have done to keep DeVries. Like, I can't blame them for him taking a much much better job. Uh, so I, I love the gamble with the guys, as Kai said, mega dominant. Uh, let's see if it translates. That might be your first three different grades. Um, oh, Mon- Mon- Montgomery had three grades. Never mind. So. ABC. And I think we started with ABC on, on Cal Perry, too. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. One of you gave him a C. Okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm curious what Matt's Bs are. Matt Matt has held off a lot of Bs so far. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, hey, coming. Let's go to Duquesne. Uh, Drew Joyce takes over for Keith Dambrot. He is a former Dambrot assistant, also Dennis Gates' assistant at Cleveland State. He's well liked, or was he under Felton? That case, either one. So Kai, State. is that a positive or not? Oh, I don't oh. know. <laughs> uh, well liked by his players, by all accounts. Little experience. Jim, I gave it a C. If Dan Brot likes him, I like him well enough. I gave it a B. A B it's one of the internal promotions, probably should be a C, but I gave it a B because the upside of like LeBron loves him. NBA right. players tweet about how cool <laughs> this is. Like, there could get some sweet momentum here of like NIL stuff. If Bronny goes there, suddenly Duquesne just looks smart for ta- taking the risk on this and getting the brand higher. So Matt, that's why I gave him the bump up from the the down the middle C. Yeah, I, I went C. Um, Dan Brod did rave about him in like the schematical sense a little bit too. So I maybe um, kind of reminds me of like the Drew Valentine, Porter Moser, where you kind of have a mid-major that rises to new heights. You have this young guru assistant that's loved by everybody. He finally gets to step in. And I think it's, you know, I'm just one example, one precedent, but that's been pretty well, I think, at Loyola. Let's go Eastern Washington. Uh, Dan Monson takes over for David Riley. Apparently very um, uh, uh, recommended from Mark Few. Mark Few had a lot to do with this hire here. I gave it a B. I think Monson's a great coach. He, Started Gonzaga, basically, uh, their 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 tournament run, their current situation. So a B for me, Matthew, from Dan Monson. Yeah, I kind of agree. It feels like he's a you know hits a single every year, a double every year, whatever. Like he's not like a you know he's consistent, but he was consistently better at Long Beach than like a lot of East Washington teams. Save the most recent Riley and Legans run. He's back home where he wants to be. I think that kind of matters, like sort of as a late career rejuvenation type thing, Jim, with, with all the grind you have to go through in coaching, recruiting these days. I gave it a B. 
B's, B's probably fair. This was like the last one I gave and I backed myself into a C. Um, I, the one like little comment was maybe it would have been more fun or, or like the Riley leggings, uh, kind of keeping it in that family, Chris Victor, all, all those, those e-wash assistants, Matt, that you love so much, like maybe keeping it in that, but you don't really, if you're Eastern Washington and big brother Spokane up the road, Gonzaga, Mark Fuse has hired this guy, yeah. you're going to be like, oh yeah. And he's good. So why not? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go to Fairfield. Jay Young, uh, what happened to him at the beginning of the year? He just got, he left. Like, le Fire yeah, it was weird. It was kind of never fully figured out. Yeah, either. strange. So Chris Casey picked up the pieces and didn't do great at Niagara, but I'll tell you what, he had an awesome year at Fairfield. And Jim, I gave him a C. I think he, I was very impressed by his year. I think he is apparently in a great place. Yep. I think if they hired him without that interim year, I'd have given yep. it a D yep. given the, the Niagara tenure, but he did a solid job last year. The roster, I, I think it was like, far and away the best backcourt in that conference yep which which helped but hey he helped build it he was on the staff so yeah matt i, I went from the d that would have been to just the, the regular down the middle seat yeah they played more modern offensively just overall like the mac had been stuck in the stone ages stylistically in my opinion um and in case he even though he's a retread from the same conference i think he actually brought like some innovative stuff to the league and that's why they were good on top of having i think a very underratedly talented roster FAU, boy, who gets to follow Dusty May? Tough job to follow. John Jacobs, a Scott Drew assistant? Say no more, Matthew. It's a B. I've seen Scott Drew's assistants already, Jerome Tang. Jacobs, it's a B for FAU for me. Uh, I gave it a B. Yeah, he retained uh, Abernathy, who was like maybe in line to get the actual head coaching job. So I think you kind of have the two head coach situation there, one with continuity, one with uh, the – we'll go ahead, Jim. we you well, I was, oh, is, is, is Abernathy ahead of church? I was looking at this because this is why. Oh, yeah, this, that's like, a good point. I was alarmed that this wasn't an internal hire with May, I everything they did. I was like, why? Why? But I think it also speaks to Kai's point. This is just, I think, a really good hire and you know, reported as like the top assistant to Drew. And I mean, that Baylor program clearly has had major success. So I think if you're FAU, it kind of shows, hey, we don't just have to nibble off the remnants of the dusty make glow. We can go out and get someone legit. That's where this program is now. I kind of like it as sort of a statement hire, but also – a pretty effective high floor hire given the Drew Tree success. Yeah, he's only been the top assistant to Drew for what two years now because Tang's gone. Yeah, Tang left. And him. how's the defense been when Tang has been gone? So I'm a little I don't know. I I went C. It could definitely be a B here. The the lack of internal just kind of raised my eyebrow for this one. Fresno State in the Mountain West. Justin Hudson gone. Uh, Vance Wahlberg takes over. The father of the dribble drive motion offense, Jim. He's 67 years old. It's a weird hire. It's an F for me. Yeah, father starts with F, father of the dribble drive <laughs> offense. This is an F. This this was probably my first F I put down. Uh, the not interviewing Pondexter thing was weird that we talked about on last week's episode. The age, the lack of success in his previous college tenure. I, I didn't get this at all, Matt. Not at all. I don't know. I went D. It's Fresno State. It was depressing the last few years. I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be a fun, you know, it'll be fun to watch. Um, this program had Rodney Terry, coach of the Texas did. Longhorns, and, and uh, who was their best player? Uh, Markel. Marvell Brown. Anyway, Marvell Brown. Thank Brown? you. Marvell something. No, it wasn't. Marvell Smith, maybe. Anyway, yeah. that's not important. What is important is I agree with both of you. This is kind of a weird hire. I guess I like it a little bit more. Both of you. I'll go D. Okay. Have you given an F yet, Matthew? No. I'm excited. No. I'm excited for that. Marvell Harris. Marvell Harris. Marvell Harris. Marvell Harris. Marvell. Thank you. Uh, okay, Gardner Webb. Tim Kraft took the Western Carolina job. So in steps, Jeremy Luther. He coached at the NAIA level, Matthew, and he was Kraft's assistant. It's just a D for me, though, right now. Uh, yeah, D. I think Kraft is really good. Um, and it's it's one of those weird leagues where I think it's better than its perception. I kind of said about the ACL year. I think the Big South is a sneaky, good, competitive conference with a lot of really good coaches. Um, Kraft's a tough act to follow. I, I I go D as well. This was the down the middle internal promotion of a guy that succeeded. So C for me. Hampton, Buck Joyner gone. Ivan Thomas steps in. Longtime high school head coach and then an Ed Cooley assistant. For many years at Providence, um, was at Georgetown last year. I gave it a C, Jim. I think this is a good hire for Hampton. I went D partially because I think it was unfair to to fire Joiner. Like they just jumped up sure. two leagues twice, 
And I still think he's a good coach. They just he just never had a chance uh, with that move. Look at what NCAA and T did in the same spot. Like they got smoked. Uh, so he just never really had the resources. I, I didn't fully agree with moving on, and that partially impacted my grade here. Uh, not a, not a ton of college experience for Mr. Thomas, like you said, a lot of high school stuff. Yeah, the Cooley assist thing honestly like doesn't really excite me as much. I'm not saying Cooley's a bad coach. It just doesn't like I don't know. I'm not like wow. Ed Cooley tree, a sweet. I'm just like, okay, cool. This, this um, Cooley's but, thing is more like who he is as a guy. Yeah, like more of just like a, a, a more like a motivator and like a, 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 a I don't know. Well, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. I just, I, I just don't see it as like a, I don't have a ring endorsement for that association guy. I just don't. I guess I'm also just low on Cooley this year. More, more of a Georgetown. Uh, a C. Oh, so you gave a C still. Okay. I gave it a C. Oh, yeah. Fun, like fun, it was a D. yeah. It's fun on Thomas fact. Uh, he has a lot of high school coaching experience. Lots. Two of those years are at T.C. Williams. Remember yeah, the Titans, Titans, folks. Come on. Oh, it's cool to awesome. see that on the page there. That's yeah. cool. Uh, Houston Christian in the Southland. Ron Cottrell brought this program into D1. He was there forever. Uh, he's gone. Craig Doty takes over. He was really good in JUCO. He won an NAIA, NAIA title. And he was also solid in the D2 ranks. Not great, solid. He seems like a good hire to me. I went with a D, though, Jim. Um, it's a big shift for Houston Christian getting a new coach. You convinced me to see, but I went D. Yeah, I, I think solid. You're being friendly to his D2 so not tenure. Great D2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was basically a 50 50 conference coach at Emporia State. And like maybe it's some it's terrifying D2 league. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, compete with Drury right there in that same conference and they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think uh, maybe I'm being unfair, State but too, I believe. But yeah, and I know they don't have like overflowing resources, but I went D also. It just was like, this would this guy have been a candidate anywhere? I don't know. This was surprising. Matt? No, it's just, it sort of is like a very, very low ring D1 type hire. I think it cost played a part. Um, and I think the quality it reflects that. I went, uh, so perhaps, perhaps that makes it a C, but I went D. Blah. What'd you get? I was D, I was DC because I don't feel like the, you know, the Ron control years were, were exactly. I went D, fine. D. Okay. Uh, Matthew Graves at Indiana State. He replaces Josh Shirts. Graves, um, and Matt's gone. Okay. Yeah, Graves, Graves was a head coach at South Alabama. He wasn't great at South Alabama, but he was Shirts' top guy. That counts for something. I went D, though, Jim, just based off Graves' previous performance, and you're replacing Shirts, which is impossible. Yeah, I, I probably could have gone D here, Kai. My, my notes, the internal promotion, okay, down the middle, that's where I'm starting. But shaky tenure at South Alabama, he was on Walter McCarty's staff at Evansville, which had some pretty bad vibes around it, and then was a special assistant to Travis Steele. Like, these aren't blowing me away. Um, the The only thing saving him is that Josh Schertz liked him enough to make him the associate head coach right away. So that, that recommendation means something C for me. Yeah, I went C. It, Jim hit all my points there. I just think the Schertz, the Schertz, uh, sign off gives me a little confidence but you're right the resume before wasn't all that stellar so Not yeah let's see uh okay iupui no longer actually iui indiana what is it indianapolis university, indiana indiana, university of indianapolis like that. Yeah, yeah. okay yeah uh matt crenshaw gone after what three years maybe got a raw deal maybe didn't i don't know he didn't win so tough tough for him paul corsero comes in very good the past two seasons in d2 matthew at uh, the University of Indy, Indianapolis. Obviously, he already lives there. I went D, but I am op optimistic about his uh, trajectory. No, I am too. I feel that, I mean, this is a very poor man's example, but like Josh Schertz, Lincoln Memorial brings a lot of the nucleus from Lincoln Memorial to Indiana State. I, it sounds like he's bringing a lot of the UND dudes, so maybe he's just going to like, I think there's some good immediate success here. I, I, I really do. I don't know how sustainable it will be, but I mean, it's a low, low bar. Yep, I went B. I, I thought it was a really good place to start for a school that's starting from the absolute dregs. Uh, he also has two years as an assistant in the Summit League at Purdue Fort Wayne. I, I think Kaufman's a good coach, so he has a little familiarity with the landscape. Add that to the D three success and and already bringing in some dudes. I I think it's a really good gamble for for IUI. IUI, gonna get used to that one. Uh, James Madison, Mark Byington took the Vandy job, so Preston Spradlin steps in from Moorhead State. He did a fantastic job at Moorhead. Jim, I gave this hire a B. Really good hire. Okay, yeah, I went A. I, I think he 
one with different staffs, different rosters. Like you, if you had hired him right after Janai Broom, I'd be like, ah, he, he won because he had an Auburn player on his team. But then he leaves and he wins with two NAIA National Players of the Year with Cross and then Riley Minix. Uh, what loses the reigning player of the year last year in the conference and still dominates the OVC. Matt, this was an A for me, Spradlin to, to James Madison. I gave it a B. I, uh, it's just a really, really good job. So I think like the bar is a high bar, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, he brings like four of his staff with him too. So it's just like Moorhead, that brain power comes to Jamie. Yeah, it's at least a B. Well, it's a B for you. Not at least a B. Well, what'd you have? I, I'd be. I agree. Yeah, okay. You'd be. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky. Cal Parry's gone. Mark Pope. Kentucky fans. Did not like this at first. And then they saw the 96 championship parade and, and him coming into the stadium. Now they're like, oh, Pope's our guy. Pope's our guy. Well, I think it's a great hire, Matt. I gave it a B. Um, he's a, a legend there. I think he's a really good coach in general. Um, a B hire for me. Uh, yeah, I went B. I mean, I just feel like a huge jump in like the all the nonsense that that job come that is required with that job. The CEO type stuff, admin type stuff. But like players he'll get. Um, the X and O prowess he's shown, Jim. I think I've always said Mark Pope's like a top five, top ten, just pure coach in the country. So I'm glad he's finally slotted at a top five, top ten program to prove it. Yeah, you've you've loved Pope and talked him up for years. I, I went B as well. I, I very uh, immediately said on Twitter, I thought this was a good hire and had a bunch of back and forth with people. I, I couldn't go A just because of what Kentucky standard should be in hiring coaches and yep. like uh, the the proven success. But I think he will have success there, uh, and he's. He played there, so he's familiar with the the pressure cooker that it can be. Also seemed to be their fourth or fifth choice, so tough to reward them an A for striking out several times. Uh, <laughs> Long Beach State, Dan Monson, Eastern Washington. They hire Chris Acker, a, a Brian Dutcher assistant at San Diego State. He's been at other Mountain West schools. Maybe not a bad hire, Jim, but I think it's a downgrade for Monson, at least on the surface. It's one of my Fs. Wow. Okay. I, yeah, I had a tough time with this one because I mostly dwelling on like, why are you letting go of Munson? Yeah. Like he's been good there. Uh, maybe not elite, elite. Like when he the first couple of years he was there, but I went D. Um, th this could age poorly just because Acker's so unproven and there's some allure of the unknown and Leon Rice staff and Brian Dutcher staff. I I think are right. two good places to learn. But uh, this was a D for Matt for me, Matt, partially because of the Munson effect. Yeah, and the Justin Hudson flame out at Fresno State. Like, I, I really went to bat for Hudson. Um, I lost a lot of money on that investment, Kai, uh, socially, reputationally. And so I don't want to be burned by another Dutcher assistant um, in the same part of the country. What's your grade? D. D. Not one of your Fs. Not one of my Fs. Louisville, where's, where are we going next? Well, Kenny Payne's gone. So, floor C. Uh, Pat Kelsey takes over. I gave it a B, Matthew. I think it's a good hire. Not the best it could have done. But a really good hire, B. Uh, B, I, I really like the hire. I almost went A here. I think Kelsey's terrific, and he's going to bring some of his assistants with him. And Peyton Siva is like a really well-regarded like player development guy. They hired him, too, and all Louisville fans will love that. Everything he's done since he's taken over has just been like, yep, nice shot, Pat Kelsey. Oh, wow, nice shot, Pat Kelsey. Got that guy in. Got that guy to visit. Got that guy to come in. I mean, it's just at single after single. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. I went A, Matt. I did it for you. Good for so you. Somebody, somebody gave us an A. I, I think the energy fits what that program needs so desperately, getting people back into it, caring about the program again, uh, and the recruiting. And he's won with players from all over at Charleston. Uh, I, I think this is a home run. Josh Leffler takes over for Tavares Hardy at Loyola, Maryland, a dominant D3 coach. I used that word earlier. Uh, Leffler won a lot at the D3 level. He's Johns pretty, Hopkins. Johns oh, Hopkins, Johnny Hopkins. Really school. <laughs> Spent a year with Wes Miller at Cincinnati. Jim, I went B. Maybe it's overstretching, but for the program, for the success Leffler had at a lower level, I, I think it's a great hire. I went B too okay. uh, as well, Kai. Right. Um, just the, the lower level success, and he spent years at Loyola Maryland itself, so familiar with it uh, as an assistant, also Lafayette, so in the conference. Matt, yeah, I, I like it. I think it's a, a, a worthy gamble for, for what he's been. Yeah, I agree. B. Um, just wow. why, why not? Low. Uh... For everybody that had straight Bs for Josh Leffler, <laughs> you, you cash your tickets. It's just, I mean, it's the it's a middle of the road Patriot team that's coming off a pretty bad, I don't know, we'd call it the Tavares Hardy thing of 
success or a failure. I don't know. You can go whatever you want to get both, but still, yeah, I, I think it's a, a good swing. All right. Marshall uh, promoted Cornelius Corny Jackson to replace Dan D'Antoni. He seems well-liked. He was an assistant for D'Antoni, Matt, for seven years. Uh, I gave him a C upgrade or um, uh, internal hire C. I, I gave it a D. I just didn't like that. They felt like D- D'Antoni got sort of nudged out. It wasn't really an amicable departure. And so you kept it internal with that ending. I didn't, I didn't like the, it just didn't feel right to me. That's all Jim. Bad reason, but that's why I gave it a D. No, that's why I gave it an F. You're forcing a guy <laughs> out to hire his assistant and only give him a two year deal and show almost no faith in him. Uh, yeah. F. I, I just don't think the process was good at all by the Marshall admin. All right. We're heading into the M's. Uh, well, Marshall was an M, I guess too. Mercer, Greg Geary gone. Ryan Ritter. We keep the alliteration. He steps in from UT Martin, previously Bethune-Cookman. It's an A, Matthew. One of my A's goes to Ryan Ritter. I think he's a fantastic coach, and I don't think he's done climbing the ladder yet either. So A for me for Ryan Ritter. I agree. I went B. Sorry, I, don't, I agree directionally. I went B. It's a good hire. Um, I did think Greg Gary was underrated there. I thought he had some kind of weird roster issues with construction, um, but I think Ritter's a good coach. I think he's proven it. I'm with you, Kai. I think he's definitely one of the young up-and-coming stars with more upside to, to pull. Yep, I went B. I, I, I'm curious how Ritter does in the portal here. He's been a good portal coach before, and Gary really struggled there. I, I don't know if that was a Gary thing or a Mercer thing, so I'll keep my eye on it. But uh, I agree with everything both of you said. Ritter's a very, very, very good coach and rising star, so B. Michigan, Juwan Howard's gone. So they brought in Dusty May, the, the crown jewel, if you will, of, of coaches last couple of years. A for me, Jim. I think Dusty May is a fantastic coach. Um, nothing more to be said. I have a feeling we're going to be dancing queen on this. That is ABBA. I feel like we're going to be ABA because I'm B. I went B. Uh, some of the end game stuff this year was really shaky, like more than one time, probably more than four times. They looked bad in late game stuff. They never really solved their defensive issues. Ted in the chat was talking about it. Uh, the Lorient thing they didn't solve until late. And he's only really one with one core. Um, but man, FAU is such a garbage program before he got there. And to get it where he did is absolutely nuts. Uh, so Matt, I, I could have gone A, but there are a couple things that knocked it down to a B for me. I think I went B, Jim, on just like the <gasps> overall evaluation of what he did at wow. FAU, which I think had had some holes, as you mentioned last year, in, in certain spots. But I think the fit and just like him back to Midwest, the staff he's acquired, the getting Joiner from St. Mary's, you got Boyden, who I think will probably be a defensive um aid and you know he wasn't a great coach at Oklahoma State but his defenses were always good I think that's going to help kind of fill a, a weakness that May recognizes um and then at Michigan I just think it's a, a perfect marriage I, I went a ultimately but I think I'm with Jim on like the b sentiment about his FAU performance or whatever all right Missouri State they hire a retread Dana Ford's gone so they bring back Conzo Martin Jim and my former coach at Mizzou Martin had a really good tenure at Missouri State I think this is a good level for him I gave it a c Matthew for the retread I gave it a D. I just thought this was such a letdown. I mean, I, I know he's going to get players, and it's probably a high floor situation. Um, I, I just think it's again, you, you could have gone innovative. You could have gone a little more, um, I don't know, off the beaten path, and you went literally right back to the beaten path, Jim, for this one. Yeah, this I feel sad for like throwing shade at the flavor of vanilla, but this is vanilla. I mean, this is like. All right, we'll go back to the kind of safe guy with we know will probably never leave us because he just gets fired if he moves up. So that makes some sense. And Kwanzaa's better. He's back home. This is a C. This is a C. Warhead State, Spradlin, we talked about earlier, took James Madison. So Jonathan Maddox steps in. He was a Spradlin assistant. Um, Murray State, also an assistant there. Worked with Spradlin, I think, as well as an assistant peer and then was under him as an assistant. So Maddox from me, Jim, gets a C. Hire. Yeah, this this was essentially an internal hire. He had the one year over at Missouri, uh, at Murray State, but spent a lot of time at Moorhead before that. And they basically were like, "We're bringing him home." That was the announcement. Uh, C, right, right down the middle. C. Yeah, C. I don't like that he spent the last two years under Prom at Murray and Shots whatever, but whatever. Yeah, it just wasn't. Yeah, weird, weird years. All right, moving on. Ohio State. Chris Holtman, DePaul. Now, Jake Diebler took over his interim, and he earned the head coaching job. But it's a C for me, Matthew, because you're taking a huge risk with Diebler here, though he did do really well down the stretch. You could have gotten an enormous name in the in the coaching carousel, and they chose Diebler. Could work out, but it's a C. 
I wouldn't see. I worry I was too low. He's like very closely tied with the Scott Drew tree. He, I think he's one of his uh, staffers was on the Drew staff and he worked under Scott Drew, I think, before. So he's been, you know, he's been cross pollinating Jim with some smart dudes, as we've discussed the, the Drew tree on this. Way. So maybe I, he could be a beep. I wouldn't see. Uh, he was the lead assistant on a team that sucked last year and wasn't good for a long time this year. <laughs> uh, and Ohio State has major, major resources, did not conduct any sort of thorough search. F for me, fellas. Ooh, I'm ooh, going ooh, real ooh. harsh. I'm going to surely piss off some Ohio State fans. But like one of the things was all the, all the players love him. And then Roddy Gale goes in the portal. Like uh, I, I thought you're keeping yeah. everybody that. I, that started to show some cracks. I don't. I can't believe they didn't do any sort of exhaustive search. This was. I, I went strong on this one. Respected, Jen, wow. respected. Oklahoma State. Mike Boynton. Uh, goodbye. You were well. You were well liked, but the results weren't there. Steve Lutz steps in from Western Kentucky. Home run hire, Jim. A. Steve Lutz is an incredible coach. Yeah, this one, I, I went A2. I, I wondered how I'd be the only one that went all the way to that degree, but I, he's won big all three years. He's won conference tournaments, and for, for people you know that matters, it is single elimination, so I don't want to judge too much off of it, but the style, the pedigree from coming from Matt Painter, the full-on success he's had at two different levels, kind of lower major, mid-major, I love it, Matt, A. Uh, I went I went B. I could go A. Yeah, Lutz is great. I, there's like nothing else to say. Um also hired a, a, a James Miller, who was a top assistant to Chris Jans for two stops. I just think smart guys tend to gravitate to smart people. I think you know their exhibit of that here. Uh, Old Dominion in the Sun Belt, Jeff Jones, unfortunately, uh, due to health issues, uh, stepped away. They hire another Jones, Mike Jones from UNC Greensboro. Um, Matt, I'm giving this one a B, Mike Jones. I think a solid C. I think you know exactly what we're getting with Mike Jones. Sorry, not um, Greensboro. I misspoke. It's the Mike Jones from Maryland. Yeah, yeah not Maryland. Um, that would probably change my mind, actually, to a C, but go ahead. Yeah, right. No, I I think, I guess I'd probably go C in both regards, to be honest. Um, at least I think you're going to get good players here, and the program's like too good to fail in many ways, and I, I just think they needed any kind of fresh start. It, to me, this was impossible as a job to go below D or F unless you really screwed it up. And it sounds like they at least got a guy who... Um, knows what he's doing, has some experience, and can definitely get players. Yeah, I went C. I, I think the players are going to come, considering the DeMatha connections. I wonder about the X and O. I mean, I know he won like crazy at DeMatha, but was that just overwhelming people with incredible talent at a factory? We'll, we'll see. So C, C for me. Pacific hired Dave Smart from Carleton, the Canadian powerhouse college, uh, to replace Leonard Perry, who did not do a good job. Uh, it's a B for me, Jim. It could easily be an A, but it's a B for me. I will do it. I'll give it the A that a. it deserves. Dave Smart went 591 and 48 at Carlton. Good. That is a 92.5% winning percentage. I know it's Canada uh, and there's not a ton of worthy competition, but they went 13 and 9 the year after he left. They were under 500 the year before he got there. It's not like it's just wins no matter who's there he's a monster he's a terrific terrific coach nine of his 48 wins were the first year he was there as he got it going it's a great unconventional gamble for pacific matt we, we talked uh, pepperdine before we got live but is that yeah. that good of a job i don't think pacific's a good job and this is an awesome gamble for a guy with upside yeah agree it's just a, a no-brainer so why, why not get creative and they certainly did and he's won at a high level and again i think the people the canada association will probably be like what canada but I mean, it, it was an elite program. Like we saw, these are the teams that like UK and Duke goes and plays in these like summer X, like they're generally competitive teams. Like th this is not like a major, like a D5 level step up by, no, by any stretch. Uh, speaking of Pepperdine, Lorenzo Romar is gone. They hired Ed Schilling, really good assistant experience. Uh, but when he was a head coach at Wright State, he was sub 500. Matt, this is one of my Fs for Ed Schilling. I went F as well. I have no idea. As I said before the show, I was like, I... <laughs> He was sort of an assistant a, during a couple of good pockets at good places, but now F. I just think this makes no sense to me, and I don't know what the direction of this hire Im implies. Feels very retready, Jim. Yeah, retready. I went D. Uh, this was down, I guess, kind of in that retread lane, and I just I can't believe that I feel like Pacific pulled a better name than Pepperdine to me. That's wild. Are we ageist? I'm worried that we're ageist. I, little, think I mean, I, I, I this type of program, you should be swinging for younger. It's kind yeah, of the upside that, thing. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's where I am too. 
Right. Like for Ewash and Missouri State, like maybe it's it's nice to get an older guy who's probably not going to leave. Like he's kind of been around the block, but um, I'd rather see upside. Yeah. Uh, how about Rice? Scott Pear is gone. Rob Lanier goes from SMU down to Rice. I gave it a C, Jim. Sell it higher. Yeah, C. I, don't say down. They're the same conference. Come on. I, I guess I know it does feel much better program. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, Dallas to Houston. If in my city power rankings, that's a that's a downgrade too. Um, yeah. C. Matt. C. I went B. I think he did a great job this year. Uh, I, I didn't have the highest expe- or perception of him coming into the season, but Rice gets an absolute steal to replace a guy. I think they were already kind of done with with a guy who absolutely killed it and should probably still be coaching there if not for some behind the scenes drama to get Enfield back to big D Kai. I kind of like it. I'm in B. All right. Uh, Slew. This is going to be easy. Uh, Travis Ford's gone. Insteps, Josh Schertz, the nicest coach in America. Jim A. A, 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 A for Slew. Yeah. First grade I put in the paper was A. I mean, there's just, I, I don't really know. I, I'll just kind of riff while Matt, stalls wherever he went walked away from the computer but uh yeah it, it doesn't feel like they were in great shape beforehand with with ford or they're in poor shape and the energy had kind of gone out of the program based on the alumni that i know and now it's like holy crap we might have the best x and o guy in the country like he, he just has i mean that's that's probably strong but he's brilliant uh and has revitalized the energy around uh shea Fitz. so a hard a Sorry, we have plumbers here, Kai. They're working in between units in the hallway, so ah. fun stuff. Hey, you said A as well? Okay, good. A, hard A. Good. Obvious. Uh, Obviously. Sienna, gone is Carm. Matriello, I'm sorry I butchered your last name, Carm. Carm had a horrible <laughs> year at Sienna this year, though it did pretty well before that. They hired Jerry McNamara. Hey, big name in the area, Matthew. Why not? I bet he's going to be a pretty good coach after spending his entire life with Bayheim. C for me. Yeah, C. Yeah, C. I went Jim. D. I went D. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. Uh, uh, Bayheim assistants have done all that well anywhere. I mean, I'm probably over harshing or over judging on Hopkins. Um, in and like maybe I shouldn't worry about firing Masarello considering their conference record got worse every single year he was there from one down to five. Um, but I still think it was a little bit of a harsh firing only to bring in a guy who's going to like I guess run Bayheim system. Yeah. yeah. Hey, wait a second. SMU, I forgot, they're in the ACC now. It is a downgrade to Rice, officially. Different conferences. So yeah, good call. How about call. that? Uh, Rob Lanier is gone. Andy mm. Infield steps in. I'm not an Andy Infield fan. You know I'm not. But I gave it a B. I think he brings potential for a different type of recruit that SMU has not seen before. I think he brings in guys. I gave it a B. Jim. He knows where to put the bag. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, he's he's very adept at that. Uh, I went C. Uh, I just it's probably good ish for for starting off in the ACC. I just think we kind of know there's no ceiling there. Like he was getting player after player at USC and got inside the top forty once in his career, and that was with a number two overall pick. Had a probably top ten pick this year and didn't get up there despite uh, you know injuries were part of that. But uh, just went C, Matt. It's not a bad hire. It's just it's solid. Uh, yeah, I went C as well. I, I'm not as convinced they're going to get like premier dudes. I think they'll get really good dudes. I actually think they're going to see a step down from his recruiting level at USC. Oh, yes, surely. Yes. But so. that school is a lot of money. A lot of money. Ton of money. Southern Illinois, SIU, Brian Mullen's gone. Controversial a bit. Um, some people thought he did a pretty good job there. Scott Nagy takes over from Wright State. Nagy was great at Wright State, Matthew. I gave it a B. B higher. I gave it a B as well. I love Mr. Nagy, and I don't like the process, Jim, but I like where they ended up here. Um, it, it was curious how the defense looks. That's been sort of the Achilles heel for the Raiders at the horizon level, obviously, the Missouri Valley. While changed in recent years, it's just a big change of culture for him. We'll see how he adjusts. Yeah, I I don't have like a ton of strong feelings on this one. Uh, I just think it's good. I went B. I, I, he's been good at Southern Illinois needed, needed something solid. So good coach, good program, good marriage. Uh, yeah. Yep. That's where I'm at. Stanford. Jared Hass is gone. Kyle Smith from Wazoo steps in a Jim a for Kai. 
Yep, I wrote mega upgrade with mega in all caps. He's won at tough places already. At Stanford's kind of a toughest job because of the academic stuff. But hey, this guy coached in the Ivy, so he has familiarity with that a little bit at Columbia. A, Matthew. 100% A. Can get players in creative ways, um, international ties. But you're going to have to exploit all those avenues at Stanford to compete at a high, high level. And yeah, I think he's just a great coach. I mean, data raid king. Nothing else to say. Still a conference rival of Andy Enfield. Weird. I know. Yeah, it's so odd. <laughs> uh, UIC. Andy, uh, Luke Yaklich, gone. Um, didn't do great. Rob Eason steps in. He was so-so as the head coach at UAB, but guess what, Matt? He was really young when he had that job. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he was. He's only 41 years old still, um, but he's a Hass guy. I'm not a Hass guy. I gave it a D. I gave it a D, too. Yeah, he was like the, I, the, I posted that video today in our group chat, like him trying to hype up the locals in the quad out uh, out here at UIC, a, a huge rock is local community, of course. Um, but yeah, D, I don't think he's a great coach. I really don't. I think he had like caught lightning in a bottle with that one tournament run. I, I'm, I'm just sort of out. If this out. isn't an F for Matt, I cannot find where his five Fs are. That's my confusion. This is this is an F for me. The the success was non-existent at UAB compared to the people before and after him. And he has no Chicago ties at all. Like I, I'm not if this was like bringing him home, I could maybe talk myself up and do a D, but I can't. So this is an F. All right, let's do USC infield gone. Eric Musman steps in. I gave it an A. I gave it an A, Jim. Musman's a, a ginormous upgrade over Andy Enfield. He'll get an even higher caliber of player than Enfield did, which is pretty hard to do. Ooh, so you're talking how high Ooh. a caliber player he'll get, and then but the upgrade in caliber of player because Cal, Calipari is taking yeah, over. Yeah, I don't get that. At Arkansas. That's how it works. I went you can't go A. You Calipari, you Muscleman, and Enfield. That's, that's the caliber of player. It's been like that for years. No. Enfield's been getting like top five, top ten recruiting classes year so after was, year. So is Muscleman and Calipari. Yeah, so then it's not that much better. I said a point. little bit higher They're caliber, all... but coaching wise, Musman way yeah. better. Than okay, and Musman's been more more portal heavy too recently. That's 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 also just a different path that he's taken. Sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, G- I went B. I went Jim. I think it's actually an upgrade from Enfield, but I can't go A. I cannot go A. Definitely an upgrade. He's a good coach. B. He's the best Damn coach it. possible they could have gotten. I can I guess I agree with that. No one cares about USC basketball anyway. Like no one cares. USC basketball LeBron, fans don't exist. Losers. <laughs> Cowards hire LeBron as coach. The other USC, USC Upstate, Dave Dickerson gone. Marty Richter, Drake assistant, DeVries assistant, steps in. It's a D for me, Matt. I just don't really know much about him. Uh, not a lot of experience. D. I went B. Huge winner at JUCO. Um, yeah, big. You sat next to Darian. What was that? Uh, I mean, Darian DeVries is like right hand man. I thought he was going to actually get the Drake job or follow DeVries to West Virginia. And then he's at. USC Upstate, like that feels like a good situation for USC Upstate to have what could have been the Drake coach or the West Virginia like top two assistant. Yeah, you know, just from that angle. Aren't you kind of alarmed that he's not getting those two jobs? Uh, so I thought about that too. It's like maybe did, did he just was DeVries like finally get away from that guy? Screw yeah. him. Take him to USC Upstate. I don't know. I went, I went see. I think he's more of a, a player getter. Like I, I don't, I, don't know. I think that was okay. part of the Juco stuff. And he didn't he only coach two seasons there, not a long track record at it. Um, so this one is a C for me. Okay, uh, Utah State, Danny Sprinkle took Washington, so they get Jared Calhoun from Youngstown. I'm still not convinced it's a great hire, Jim. <clears throat> I gave it a C, though. Yeah, I wanted to go B. I just don't love like the geographical nature of it. It's kind of odd. I feel like coaching in Utah is a sort of unique thing. Uh, Ryan Odom did it just fine, and some of those West Coast guys are have done okay. But um, the one big credit I'm giving Calhoun is – Youngstown State has two, uh, excuse me, three 21 seasons since 1980, and Calhoun has two of them. Like, he wanted a job that no one wins at. That's that's good. And Matt, Utah State administration has my full confidence. Right. Exactly. Doing. You cannot give a Utah State hire less than a B, and I think Calhoun, people don't realize how good of a job he did. Y- y- Youngstown was a, is a tr- was a trash program. Like, it just was really historically not great. Um yeah, right. The fit feels weird, but like, yeah, the fits felt weird before, and dudes have won. So I, I, I think I like the higher B. Okay. Bu- 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 bu. UT Martin, uh, the other Shulman, Jeremy Shulman, steps in. He's the nephew of John Shulman going to Central Arkansas. Um, I believe that's where it was. Jeremy Shulman steps in for Ryan Ritter, dominant JUCO coach. Matt, I went with a C. <sighs> I, I went F just because of the unknown. Is that too harsh? I, I saw he was pretty good, but 
there's, there weren't many Fs. There, there, there's no true well, Fs in this. Gave it that's what I'm saying. I feel like I had Please to. As, as Russ in the chat said, right, it's hard to grade on a curve when you put yourself and you pigeon yourself into that the distribution. I don't like it. Yeah, I, my face is going to be on a dartboard at the Shulman family Thanksgiving. This is my second D to the family in the hiring mm-hmm. process. But <laughs> again, I just don't know how well, and Brian Ritter is probably the exception to this, but winning at the JUCO level versus winning at the D1 level, you can just out talent people at the junior college level. There's not a ton of structure to those games. Some of the teams are truly awful. Uh, and I like that he has a longer track record, but he has zero D one experience head coach or assistant. Like this is completely new for him. Uh, Rio Grande Valley. Uh, Khalil Fennel steps in former Louisville and BYU assistant has some experience in the Texas area. Um, it's a big state. Jim, I gave it a C. Yep. C seems like a grinder. Got, got himself from UT Permian Basin yeah. to Mark Pope staff at BYU. That's that's a pretty good step up there. And yeah, Texas is big, but familiarity with a school in the middle of nowhere, Texas, he's at least got an idea of how to sell that maybe. So C for me. I went B. Vaqueros, they're coming back. Um, don't like that they had to uh, readjust the sal- the posted salary because no one would want- take the job at, I think it was like $200,000 a year or something fairly low twos or something like that. No, it was $275,000. Anyway, uh, glad he got a good coach who, yeah, a Mark Pope assistant. That's a good, that's a good starting point. Also hired uh, one of Mikey Magpie's assistants from UC Riverside. So kind of like that. Uh, UTS. I'm surprised. Yeah. I was just going to say, uh, I, I forgot. Go ahead. Yep. UTSA, Steve Henson gone. Austin Klon steps in. He was at Nichols. Then he was on the staff of Nate Oates at Alabama. A, the guy's a rock star. He's awesome. Jim. A, yep. Was really good at Nichols. Proved it quickly. And then. Uh, oh, he shows up at Alabama. The offense gets even deadlier, and they make the Final Four. So, yeah, Matt, this is an A to me. I went B. I thought Henson was pretty good there. I, maybe I'm just like I was, I was. I went B as sort of to, hey guys, Henson was not so bad there. I think he's actually a pretty decent coach. Tough place to win. Very hard place to win. So that reminds left. me. That, that reminds me of my Rio Grande Valley question. Uh, was am I kind of surprised that Matt Figure didn't work out there? Because I think he's a decent coach. Maybe that's just a black yeah. hole. Yeah, it could be a black hole program for sure. Uh, Vanderbilt, Stackhouse gone. Mark Byington in. I gave it a B, Matt. I, I like Byington quite a bit. Um, he's not a guy that's going to win the press conference, though. B. What? Byington's a charmer. I love Byington. He's Terrible pretty, take from you. No, he's pretty boring. He's incredibly boring. No, he's a good dude. He's just got he's I'm, got that uh that, that Virginia dude, twang down. He's got a he's a boring. He's a fun dude. <laughs> oh, I'd get a beer with him. Fine, yeah, I'll, I'll meet up with him. You can hang out in the alley. I want I went A. I went A. <laughs> Great coach, uh, I'm, I'm better person. Great coach, better person. Team Kai, B. It's good. It's not great. It's a good hire. I like that we had animosity there. Uh, Washington, mm-hmm. Mike Hopkins gone. Danny Sprinkle in. Sprinkle, all he's done is win, Jim, at the D1 level. A for me, for Danny Sprinkle. Kai, a. literally the first note I wrote was all he's done is win. All he's done so, is win. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we are on the same page there. Yes. Uh, for those keeping track at home, I've only used eight of my A's so far. Here's the ninth. Danny Sprinkle, A, semi-regionalish ties, big upgrade from the prior regime. It's just A's all around. A. a, a next. Agree. He's going to win. He's got, I think his dad or he, he has... There's a Washington affinity there too, so it doesn't like feel like a complete like... He's, I think, really invested in this job as like a landing spot potentially for... But who knows? I, yeah, he's just a winner. He's going to win. Uh, little brother, Washington State. Kyle Smith went to Stanford, so David Riley comes in from Eastern Washington. I like Riley, Matt. It's a B for me. They're in the WCC now. B higher. It's an A for me because of the limit- limitation restrictions, the perception that it's like a declining program. So to get a guy who could be a high major coach in a few years, in my not so humble opinion, um, I think that I think it's a good a, a one. I hope they hope on to as they off ramp into the Mountain West gym, assuming that all plays out as expected. I joined you at A, Matt. It's, it's for you. Kind of, it's probably rare for them to find a guy an hour away that is relatively yep. a home run. And I'm not going to overly harshly judge him for two semifinal losses in the Big Sky. I'm going to say you dominated that league's regular season and kind of have the versatility principle principles that should translate up well. A lot of six five six six guys in his lineups. That coaching tree has been generally pretty solid. So uh, I, this is another an A, a for me. Uh, Western Carolina, go back across the country here. Justin Gray. Took uh, the job at, gosh, okay. Coastal. Coastal. So Tim Kraft comes in from Gardner-Webb. A C for me. I like Kraft, Jim, but it's a C. 
I went B. Um, B he never won me. less than nine league games at Gardner Webb. Like he just doesn't have bad years. He, he never did there. And I think it's really good for South or for Western Carolina to pull somebody with that success, considering the resources have, by every measure, been low in the SoCon. Uh, so the consistency, Matt, I, I like the higher form. B. Love it. I'm a craft guy. I am. I think I'm on record as saying that. So I went B. Craft mac and cheese. Western Kentucky. Steve Lust, Oklahoma State. Hank Plona. Uh, Indian Hills JUCO coach absolutely destroyed the JUCO level. Promoted after Lutz left. I gave it a C, Matthew. Though a lot of upside there, in my opinion. Yeah, it's just a, a tough act to follow it with Lutz. I was only there for one year, but and it is a very good program with a pretty high bar of standard too. But I think he just won at such a high rate at JUCO for so many years, Jim. That I'm going to give him the exception to the JUCO skepticism rule. I I, I did go. Uh, I did go B here, didn't I? No, I was CB. I was on the fence. Just tell me what okay. to do. I'll, I'll choose one. Well, pick the C because I went D. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll I, go C. This, this is another like, did he just overwhelm Indian Hills? Like, just I, I think gets players with their eyes closed. Um, and so I think that is part of it. And I worry that there was some, let's try to keep this roster intact. So, like, McHenry and um, who's the other one? Callum Bay are both Indian Hills guys. So I'm wondering if, like, oh, if we hire him, we'll keep those two for sure. And then maybe some other guys. Uh, I think that's a little short-termy for a program of Western Kentucky's caliber at that level, so I, I wasn't high on it. Fair enough. West Virginia, uh, goodbye to Josh Eilert. Hello, Darian DeVries. A, for me. DeVries, great coach. I think he's going to do very well there. Fits the culture, in my opinion, Jim. Yep, A, I am not going to knock him for NCAA tournament collapses uh, as, as frustrating as they were for me financially and to watch. He's a really good coach. What what Drake did with him there, he won 20 games every single season. That includes COVID year. He won like 25, some years 28. One before his son got there, one after. He's awesome. He's just a star. Matthias A. Yeah, in a valley that had you know Northern Iowa, Missouri, you know Missouri State, Bradley, like good pro- like Southern Illinois, good programs, and they were better than all those programs for three years in a row. And Drake's never at, at that level of wrong on the totem pole. So yeah, I went A. I think he's just an awesome coach. William and Mary, Dane Fisher, goodbye. Hello, Brian Earl. Is this A across the board? It's an A for me. Yes. It's, it's the biggest A on the board for yeah, me. Yeah, it's a big A. Call up AAA. A++. They can, they can jumpstart my car, and I would love for Brian Earl to show up because I would expect competence and nothing less from him. Fantastic. Why did he take this job, Brian? <laughs> he wants to hang his name in the rafters there if he's the first <laughs> one to get an NCAA up, tournament baby. bid at the tribe. Shout yes. out. Try. We have to go to the Williamsburg High Grindel area out there in Virginia. Nice, yeah. nice nook. Uh, Wright State, Scott Nagy went to SIU, so Clint Sargent steps in. Little experience, um, all of it's under Nagy. He was a grad assistant at South Dakota State under Nagy. He worked at Wright State under Nagy. It's a D for me, though, Jim, until we know something further. Yeah, these are the, the last two are the same for me. The down the middle, promote the assistant after a successful tenure of the guy ahead of him. This is a C for me. I went F, and I just feel like Wright State's a pretty good program that could have actually gotten someone better yeah. outside. Um, is that fair? That's too harsh, probably. I gave it a D. Oh, that's fine. I'm looking for Fs. I'm looking, I'm hunting for Fs. This one well, felt like one to me. This last one's an F for me. Youngstown State, uh, J.R. Calhoun's gone. Ethan Faulkner in. Talked about how hard it is to win here. He was an assistant or Calhoun. He's 33 years old. I, I just don't expect him to do very well here, at least to start, Matt. F. Uh, yeah, 38. I'm, I am ages. Like, I just feel like if you're my age or younger, like I, I need you to be like, regarded as some like super whiz wonderkin type of person, or I'm just going to be like, you're my age running a, a whole program and doing this. Like, I just, I don't know. So yeah, I, I went to, I went D Kai. I didn't go full F. I went D. Yeah. I don't think you had I, your F allocation. That's okay. Jim. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm too short. I'll, I'll be honest. Cause the other two, the other two we were assigned to jobs that were not filled to jobs that were not filled. No. F- okay. Sorry. Let's go through right now. No, no, Florida no, no, A&M. No time. Florida A&M. Why yeah, are there no, I, there's no one hired yet. It's ridiculous. I went, F. I went with a C. Um, it's kind of a fun comparison. Like when Moorhead state hired Preston Spradlin and he was 29, took him four years to figure it out. Like those young guys do take a bit except for Austin Clunch. Uh, but yeah, another C for me, just hiring the assistant of a successful tenure and they have much less hiring power than Wright state. Yeah. Youngstown does. So I, I like the internal promotion. All right, fellas. Hey, good coaching, higher grades. Uh, we're going to end the podcast as we usually do with the review section. We only have two and one's very short and then one's a basically attack on Jim. Uh, so here we go. Review section. Thanks for joining us, by the way. P- please 
clip the grades out of context and post them on Twitter. Without the context of the bell curve, that'll get a lot of hate and enjoyment, I'm sure, from the people out there on Twitter. Uh, Cabo Rave says, feel better. Class act, boys. Thanks. I guess he was referring to Matt and I being a little under the weather recently. Uh, thank you, Cabo Rave. And then now the three-star review. A three-star review. Not, not common, but here we go. Blue Gator fan. Jim confused about Duke. For Jim to say Duke had no fun or was soulless this season shows how little he watched Duke. Did you never see Jerry McCain grinning ear to ear and giving interviews? The story is how McCain became the soul of this team and made it fun. Sure, we expect an upperclassman to do that. But that's the uniqueness of the story. You missed it, Jim. Just like most of the media missed Duke surviving upset bids in week one, making the Elite Eight. That last part is categorically false. But, Jim, you can defend yourself. No, Blue Cater Van, you missed it, sir. Uh, I'm not talking like you can make all the TikToks after the game you want and have a great dance going in the locker room. Sure, that looks fun. Uh, that that's great to celebrate. They don't play with you like watching them out there. They look like they're kind of going through the motions. There's the weight of the world on their shoulders. They're playing with pressure. And I put most of that on Shire, not the players. Yeah, he slows them down. They play with restrictor plates on. They don't get to run. Like you just watch some of the other teams that were better. Like, for instance, uh, comparing to UConn's not fair, but like the way they share the ball, like it's so much fun for them to make a great cut and a great pass. And Duke just felt so rigid and and kind of structured. And they they never like felt like anything they accomplished was because they had to. It wasn't because it was like, how fun would it be if we did this? So that that's that's my perspective. I stand by my my point for sure. McCain was awesome. Just an absolute breath of fresh air. One of yeah, my all time favorite two teams. But, but to, I think what Jim's point is, and I agree with him, it's just like, it, it did never feel like a real legitimate title threat of a team to me. And that's sort of what kind of soured me, even though I feel like the team like liked each other. But I think Jim's points about John Char being a little bit overly rigid in how he constructed the offense, I think kind of lended itself to some of the, I don't know, not always as fun as the talent or the pieces should have looked. So I I, I agree with Jim partially. One yeah, just, just partially. One take results in three-star review. That's how things work apparently. Uh, hope you enjoy our podcast for the other 99.9% of it. You clearly, yeah, it would have been a one-star review, Kai, but everything <laughs> else raised it to a three-star. Oh, wait, so this is a three-star? Ah, yeah, man, we, three we gave such clear instructions. I thought it was very clear that five stars, like, just follow the <laughs> follow the fine print, guys. We uh, tell you what to do. Just do it. Just execute. Right? And, and do please like the video if you're on YouTube and subscribe, please, uh, to the channel. Follow us on Twitter, 3 mw underscore CBB. We're likely off next week. I'll be in Switzerland. I'm very excited about it. I'll be in Switzerland for... 10 days, so maybe a little adjustment of schedule in two weeks. We'll see, but likely off next week. Goodbye out there. Bye, everybody. Good luck. Have fun your weekend. Whatever. Goodbye.